about the mountains of influence. I don't know. Some of us may have heard the words the mountain of influence before. Um, it is just a set of um, words and description that people use to uh, describe the different spheres of influence, the different areas of influence in society. So this is there's no hard and fast rule really about them. I'm, I'm using them simply because they are convenient to, to use to delineate the different mountains of influence, the different spheres of influence. But the starting point again is that God has an agenda, God has a plan, God has a big picture. And his ultimate plan is for the whole earth, the whole earth to be filled with the glory of God. He wants to displace the devil and his court and to enthrone us and to, <laughs> I'm so sorry and to enthrone us so that we can bring his glory to cover the whole earth. He wants to remove the godless and enthrone the righteous. And that is what Habakkuk 2, 14 to, 12 to 14 says that, Woe to you who build cities with money, gained from murdering and robbery. So there are people who have actually built cities with money that they gained from murdering and robbery. And he says that, As the Lord not decreed that godless nations' gains will turn to ashes in their hands, they work so hard, but all in vain. Verse 14 says, The time will come when all the earth is filled as the waters fill the sea with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. So God is saying that there's a set of people, there's a set, there's a, there's a, there's a sect, there's a people who build cities with monies that they gain from murdering, murdering people and robbing, robbing people. And that they are godless nations. And but that their prosperity, what they have found from as as the rewards of their what they have profited from murdering people, killing people, and robbing people, it will turn to ashes in their hands. And the very next verse talks about the glory of the Lord being covering the whole earth as waters cover the sea. So so and th there's a contrast. So God is saying that there's, there's all these people, but that there will be a change. In government, there will be a change in what obtains. There will be a change and there will be a new people coming. And the new people will bring an awareness of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea, that the whole earth is going to be filled with that glory. And I'm just here to break it to you, the news that we are the people. We are the people. We can't even be looking around and saying, who is the person that they are talking about? You and I are the people who will bring the glory of God, the awareness of the glory of God to the earth as the water covers the sea. Okay? And Isaiah 60, 17 to 18 says, instead of bronze, I will bring you gold, um, I will bring silver in place of iron, bronze instead of wood, and iron instead of stones. I will appoint peace as your governor and righteousness as your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin, nor destruction within your borders, but you will name your world salvation and your gates praise. So God is telling us that he will appoint peace as our governor and righteousness as our ruler. So the Lord will appoint he will put in place what is supposed to be instead of what obtains and he says when this is done that violence will no longer be heard in our land but and there would be no wasting no destruction no ruin within our brothers but that our walls will be salvation and our gates praise so we are the people that will bring to pass the day of the lord we are the people that will Ensure that righteousness rules in the land and our, our walls are salvation and our gates are praised. We are the people. God is, is done his part already and is still doing his part. And it is left to us to also do our part because it, it has to be a collaboration. Remember how we said at the beginning that we are partnering with God. So, why did we even say that? Um, Satan and his courts that they, they, the ones bringing, you know, bringing uh, mayhem into the world and, you know, just ruling with unrighteousness and, you know, all the things that we said earlier on. 
that um, there's a set of people, there's a set of people and, and um, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in high places, all of those who are directing what happens on earth. Because um, we must know that when Adam, when Adam, when he sinned, when he turned against God, when he disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he gave the C of O, he gave the title deed to earth, to what God had created and given him. He handed it over to the devil, to Satan. He handed it over. And since then, Satan and his demons, they've unleashed terrors on the earth. If that is not the case, how come when the devil went to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, look at all of this world, look at this earth and everything in it. If you bow down to me, I will give it to you. It's because he had possession of it. He had possession of it. He was, he, he was in charge of it because of what Adam had done. So, but we who are Christians, we who are believers, we who are saved, we are no longer under the curse of the law. We are no longer under the curse of the law. So when Jesus came and died for us, in those three days that he went to hell and hates, he collected the key back from Satan. He collected the key back. So Satan is, he doesn't even have the key to his own house. <laughs> he doesn't even have any, any, any hold over anyone who is in Christ. Now, people who don't know Christ, they are still under the rule of Satan. People who don't have God, they're still under the rule of Satan and he's still in charge of their world. And they're still, you know, that curse. There's a curse that was laid upon Adam and upon Eve in the garden. And we probably should dwell on this a little bit, even though that's not where I'm going. But let's take a detour and stay there for a moment. So when um, Adam when he, he, he himself and Eve, when they ate that forbidden fruit, the Lord came and said to the woman, that because you have done this thing, that your desire will be towards your husband every time, that your desire will be towards him. So that is the cause of the law. And I'm not saying... <laughs> I, and I'm hoping this comes out right. I'm not saying that women should not desire their husbands, that women should not um, want their husbands. We should. But then there was a cause that was placed on a woman, on, on Eve herself, that ensures that even though she wanted her husband, she tries to please him and all of that, her desires is towards him. But um ultimately the satisfaction of man whether male or female is in god so 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 in doing that she had ensured that i'm a bit distracted please give me a moment let me um <laughs> i'm so sorry let me just um gather my thoughts for um a moment Okay, so uh, so um, the cause that was placed on the woman in the Garden of Eden, it, the, the Lord said to her that he will multiply her pains in childbirth and she will give birth to her babies in pain. That she will want to, I'm reading from the message version, it said you will want to please your husband but he will lord it over you. He will lord it over you. Let me look for other versions that will explain it more. It says, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire your husband, but he will rule over you. It says, you will desire your husband, but he will rule over you. So people who are under the curse of the law, people who are under the curse of the law, they, they have... And oh, I have, a, I have an incoming call. Sorry.
sorry guys <laughs> i want to record this today okay so that course was laid on adam on eve in the garden but as children of god as christians as believers ladies in as much as our desire is towards our men we must learn we must let the holy spirit teach us how our desires can be first to god and then as an outflow of that to love our husbands okay and that is what will help um, a person to stop seeking for 100 percent validation from someone they may not be able to get it from especially if it's someone that is not as yielded to the holy spirit as they should be so the cause was that she would desire him she would want everything she needs from him but he will rule over her he will lord it over her and as has that not been the case with um with people who don't know god and even sometimes with people who know god but who have not allowed the holy spirit to expunge flesh from them so i just wanted to point that out so that um, um it can be a point for discussion for and uh, for prayers for anyone that needs to pray about it that lord let my desire be to you first let me get everything that I need from you and so that I will be positioned to receive everything that I need from my husband, from him. And that is for married folks. For people who are not yet married, you want to ask for a man whose heart has been circumcised by God. You want to ask for a man who loves the Lord, whose own desire is even towards the Lord himself, so that we are both looking to God for satisfaction and then let's take a look at the curse that was placed on adam himself and what the, what the lord said was that you will because you have listened attentively to the voice of your wife and you have eaten fruit from the tree about which i commanded you saying you shall not eat of it the ground is now under a curse because of you in sorrow and toil you shall eat the fruit of it all the days of your life so he, he, the lord cursed the ground for Adam's sake, the same ground that was yielding him rivers that led to pure gold and, and lapis lazuli, the delium, the same ground, the same ground that was already bringing out water by itself before the rain started, the same ground that was giving him fruits bearing trees and all, all, of different kinds. So the same ground became cursed for, or, or on behalf of Adam. And the Lord was saying that. In sorrow and toil, Adam will eat of the fruit of the land all the days of his life, that both thorns and thistles will the land grow for him, and that he shall eat the plants of the field, but by the sweat of his face he will eat bread until he ret returns to the ground from which he was taken. So what was supposed to be easy, what used to be easy became tough. What used to be easy became tough. What Adam got by grace, it became tough. So if you see someone that is working hard, but the land is not yielding for them, then they need to pray. And, you know, beyond prayers, first accepting that because I'm in, in, in Christ, I'm a new creature and all things have passed away. Because I'm in Christ, I'm no longer under the curse of the law. So this is the curse of the I'm no longer under this curse that Adam was, was cursed because I came in through Christ to the lineage of God. So the land is blessed for my sake. The land yields an increase for me. The, the ground yields an increase. Everything I touch turns to gold. So, so you must first settle that in your mind and then bring that consciousness into your workplace, into the work of your hands and continue to claim and to actually believe that the work of your hands is blessed. So that's the detour that we were going to take um, there. We, as Christians, we are operating under open heavens because Christ came. So even if the whole earth 
Uh, and the Bible says it, that darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the nations. But we arise and we shine for our light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. So as Christian, even if the heavens are closed over unbelievers, over the whole world, the heavens are opened over us because we are different. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. So you are walking under open heavens. But if you are not aware, then there is that you, you may not be able to take advantage of what you are not aware of. You may not be able to. So you need to have a knowledge of who you are, whose you are, and what benefits accrue to you f because of your position. And you must also know the responsibilities of your position and your kingship because there is a kingship that God has given to you and it is sustained by your priesthood. There's a whole message that Papi preached on this, a series, a whole series actually, on this uh, kingship being sustained by the priesthood and how to ensure that that priesthood is vibrant and the place of your altar is, 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 is you know, your, 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 the fire on your altar is kept going. And I will find um, the title, and if there's anyone that remembers the title of that particular series, should please share with us, but I will look for it as well. So there is a kingship that you have. It is supposed to be sustained by your priesthood. So you can't go around trying to be a king when you have not, you know, serviced the altar, when you have not come into the holy place, into the, you know, the holy of holies. If you haven't done that, then, man, it's, it's you know, you're not going to be able to maximize your your kingship. So I hope this, this makes a, 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 some sense to us. And the summary is that the first Adam sinned, and because of that, himself and Eve, they brought a curse to human race. But there was a way of escape. The Lord sent Jesus. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, who came and died for us and redeemed us from the curse that was placed on Adam. So anything that looks like that particular curse should not come near us. And we said that it is in knowing who we are whose we are and what is ours by, by birthright and by redemption is how we can ensure that we are actually walking under our open heavens. And I, there's a story that comes to mind. The story is that of a, a particular homeless man and he, he, he didn't have anywhere to live but he had this knapsack and everything he had in this world was in his knapsack. And he went from place to place begging for food and all of that. So one day, this guy, because of, I think, exposure to the elements, weather, rain, and all of that, he died. Then they opened his knapsack. And inside it was a letter that was addressed to him. The envelope was old, but the letter was never opened. So they opened this letter, and in it, they found a letter from his uncle saying that, I know your parents are dead. I know you don't know that you have anybody else, but I am actually your uncle, and I also do not have any um, body, so, and I'm so rich. When I die, I am willing um, all of my inheritance to you, like my house in this, my house in that, my cars, my this, my that. And apparently the guy inherited a lot of money. But because he never knew, he died a pauper, he died a homeless man. When he actually had homes, he had estates. So it is what you know that you have that you can take ownership of, that you can enjoy. And that is why we are constantly studying. That is why we're going through these rigorous studies to say, what do we have? What has been bequeathed to us? What has been given to us? What has been given to What has been handed to us? What do we have? That if we know it, then we will be able to maximize it. So going back to the fact that there are responsibilities 
attached to a position and to a kingship. Let's now talk about the mountains, the seven mountains of influence. And this, the mountains are the mountain of government, the mountain of business, business slash economy. You should probably have a jotter. If you're not watching this, if you're just listening to the audio version of this, you should have a jotter where you're writing these things. So I start again, the mountain of government, the mountain of business slash economy, the mountain of education, the mountain of art and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of family, and the mountain of religion. And like I said earlier on, this is just a categorization for ease of reference. That someone can look at all of these seven items and say, I am on this particular mountain. This is where I'm operating. So the mountain of religion would also mean the mountain of church. Church. The mountain of family, it's clear. Somebody that their job has to do with families. The mountain of media, you work in, in media in any capacity. Social media, you work in TV, you work in radio station, you work anything that has to do with media, about the passing of information, about the, the, the engineering of, of a, a, a people's mindset about passing information that can determine the way people think. That is media. Art and entertainment, you know, these are the people in arts industry, creative industry, the people who sing, the people who dance, the people who do movies, um, etc. But I'm giving these examples so that by the time you go through all of these seven, you can say, I am on this particular mountain. So if you work, work in a TV station, for instance, then you are on the mountain of art and entertainment currently. So th there's also the mountain of education, and that is, you know, schools, schools, um, anything, anywhere, any organization that attempts to educate people. So that's the mountain of education. If you're a teacher, you're on the mountain of education. Um, if you're a lecturer, you're on the mountain of education. If you're a writer, you may be on the mountain of education, depending on what you're writing about. So if you are in business, you do business, then you are on the mountain of business and economy. And you may be working in a structured environment, but still be in business. So for instance, if you work in a bank, you are actually on the mountain of business and economy because money makes the world go round, sort of. And if you're on that, if you're in that industry, financial services industry, then you are on the mountain of economy and business. But also if you own your own business and you run it, you are on the mountain of business. Now, sometimes you may be on two mountains or more. So, for instance, someone that runs their own business may be on the mountain of business um, and economy. But if the type of business that they run is a family counseling um, clinic, then they can find themselves on both on both the, the mountain of family and the mountain of economy. And there's also the mountain of government. This is clear. If you're in politics to any extent, you are in government. So tell us, tell us which mountain are you on? Which mountains are you on? The job that you do on a day-to-day, -day, where does it fall into? Your job on a day-to-day, -day, where does it fall? Where, does, where can it be categorized? And I want us to pay attention to Micah um, 4, 1 to 3, and Isaiah 2, 2 to 3. And they actually say the same thing, more or less. And this is a, a, a part of the scripture that we pray again and again in God's favorite house. And it is, it is actually one of our foundational scriptures, according to Papi. So it says that in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all nations will stream to it. And many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. For the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
So basically this passage is saying that in the last days there will be a mountain of the house of the Lord that will be the chief of the mountains. So we're saying that you must rise to the top of your industry, you must influence before God. You must first of all be on the mountain of the Lord. Of the, on the mountain of the house of the Lord, you must climb the mountain of the house of the Lord. You must be too taught by God. You must learn of him. You must go through his processes and allow him to grow you so that he can pick you and put you on the mountain that you should be. And then as you stand and take your place and start to do your work on the mountain that the Lord has put you, then you will be able to bring all the people to the knowledge of God. And it is at that point that people will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. He will teach us. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. So you and I are the people that God wants to use to teach people his ways, to show them his path so that they can walk in it. But you cannot teach people what you don't know. You cannot teach someone what you haven't practiced yourself. So it is important that we pay attention and we start to learn these things and we start to practice these things because there's a lot that is hanging on it. There's a lot that is hanging on it. So for each of these mountains, there is a foremost fight. And um, this coinage is from one of my very good friends. So she calls it the foremost fight that is confronting each mountain. But let's look at this, this picture. And um, this picture shows the mountain of church. And it says that the mountain of church has to do with God, has to do with morality and with values. So if the devil is going to bring a fight against this particular mountain, then he will start to let people, to teach people how to carve idols for themselves apart from God. And it is possible to dismiss this thought and say, well, I don't have an idol, I don't have a shigide in my house. But anything that we exalt above God, anything that we prioritize above God in our lives is become an idol. So sometimes it is work, sometimes it is a spouse, sometimes it is the children, Sometimes it is a friend that we feel that this person is the one that has helped me to get to where I am. But the Bible says that it is the Lord that elevates. It is only the Lord that elevates. Only the Lord can enthrone and dethrone. You know, it puts someone, it, it, it leaves someone from Mary Claire and puts them among princes. So you can't even look at a person and say, this is the person that has changed my whole story. God used them and we are grateful to them, but ultimately you should be able to remember that God is your God. So the moment that the devil is able to convince a people to be slack in their moralities, to relax when it comes to moral values, then he has won this battle on this mountain when, as regards those people. When it comes to values, if he can help them to to relax a bit, to not carry God on their head so much now. What what is this 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 tough? Life is not this tough now. Did you kill somebody? You know, if he can let them think that way, if he can let them say, "Oh, no need to go to church today. You have worked all week," or "No need to have your devotion today. Maybe you just came back from night vigil," or you know, different things. But but that we must understand the fight that is coming against the mountain that you are on so that you will know how to direct your fight and how to direct your prayers. So if you are on the mountain of church, on the mountain of religion, for instance, then that means you are actually working in church. You are actually, actually working in church. You are actually in ministry. So you may be like a pastor. You may be, you know, you're just in ministry working for God. It is your job and so you must identify the tricks that the devil uses to draw people away from from god and you must be able to fight 
And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. So you must be able to identify the strongholds that the devil is putting in people's mind against God. And you must be able to hold them by the hands and walk them through a path of, 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 of restoration, of deliverance, of healing, you know, of wholeness. So if we look at the mountain of business, for instance, it has to do with prosperity. It has to do with economy. And on this mountain, the Lord's intention, like we saw, is that everything that we have, we have been given by God. And that if we know this as our truth, then there should be nothing that God will say we should bring or drop that we shouldn't be able to drop. And the fight against this, this, this particular mountain is mammon. Is mammon that people become lovers of the world. They become lovers of money more than lovers of God. And that if we know that this is what we are fighting up against, then we will know how to position ourselves for victory. So if you're in business, for instance, you know that the devil is constantly struggling to to get you busy, 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 so that you won't have time for God. It will get you to, it will, start, it will try to get you to chase money to the detriment of your spiritual life, to the detriment of your family life, but it will not succeed in Jesus' name. The devil will try to make one feel that they should do anything to get money because, oh, more this is business, so, and the, 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 the world is not smiling. You know, such terms, such terminologies that make people hardened, that make people ready and willing to do anything for money, and that make people hoard money and, you know, use money as if they, they are not servants of God, as if, as if they are not going to account to God for every cover that is sent their way. So you must know what you are battling against. You must know, you must learn contentment, but you must also learn that prosperity is of God, and that everything that God brings our way, He has a reason for it. So we must learn to find out what is reason for bringing this this stream of income, this abundance, and we must be disciplined enough. We must have crucified self, crucified the flesh enough to be able to say this is what God would have to do with this thing, and to actually go ahead and do it. On the mountain of government, politics, you know what's going on. Corruption, embezzlement, you know, indiscipline, different things. Those are the, the, the weapons that the devil is using on that mountain to, to, to take ground for himself. But when we children of God, when we arise and we say, no, the mountains belong to God. And it is God that enthrones a person. And we... Stay in there and let God enthrone us. Let God take us through his processes so that when we now rise up to become the president and the lawmakers, we will be able to close our eyes to corruption, to say, I will not be a part of this, to say, no, my, my heart is already circumcised. These things hold no appeal to me, to not embezzle, to be able to, do, to give fair judgment fair rule that righteousness will reign in our land and that it is we are the ones that will bring these things to pass then if we now take the mountain of media education arts and entertainment together they are the mountains that define world view they define beliefs they define values what obtains if something is going to trend take it to any of these mountains and you will see it trending you will see it trending if someone watches the news consistently, then they will think like everybody else in the world is thinking because there is a structured way that, that you know, the news is being disseminated and there is a, a strategy behind all of these things. And so as Christians, as children of God, we must arise and implement the strategies of God. Start in your own little way. So when I look at people that say, Oh, I don't do social media. I don't do this. I don't do that. Yes, those things have their own minuses. But what if you have your own voice? And when the time comes and push comes to shove, you are able to use your voice for God. Imagine that you want 
something something terrible is about to happen maybe they want to legislate child marriage or something and you have a million followers or you have five million followers if you post something against that your followers are going to repost they're going to like you have started a revolution already as against having 300 followers or not even being on social media then it's just you and your your boo or you and your friends discussing it in your threes and twos and saying it's so unfair why would they do this why would they do that who is listening who is listening so we must be wise as serpents we must be gentle as doves we must be wise we must learn to use the things that God has given us. Technology is from God. Yes, people may have abused it, but it is ultimately initially from God. So we must not be we must not be saying, Oh, let me distance myself from all these things. But no, find out how you can use all of these things for God, for kingdom. Uh, and lastly is the, the mountain of family. And it talks about emotional health emotional health it talks about well-being starting from childhood that if the mountain of family is stable that people will be will be will be will be balanced look at most people that have issues one issue or the other is because of something that happened in their childhood so imagine that we are able to have um awesome childhood experiences to give children awesome experiences we're able to eradicate uh, uh, pedophiles and we're able to you know ensure that parents are not too busy on the mountain of business that they are ignoring family so that children are now growing up to be wayward or to be emotionally unbalanced mm? or you know different things different things but that we must know, like if you are on the mountain of family, it is your prerogative to make sure that, look, if we can sort this, then every other thing is likely to be sorted. Every other thing is likely to be sorted because once a child is brought up in the way of the Lord, the Bible says it will not depart from it. So share with us, share with us in the group, which... Which mountain are you on? Which mountain are you on? So as we close today, um, if you have been answering all your questions from day one, then you'll be able to do your vision board today, actually, right now, right here as we speak. Because you would have had some level of clarity as to what you are called to do. As to first what God is doing and your part in it and your specifics of your assignment. And so those are the main things. Once those are in place, then we can go ahead and envision the future that God wants for us. And right 